Hi, and uh, welcome to this first video in a sequence of three videos where we gently introduce the topic of cluster analysis. So cluster analysis falls in the category of unsupervised learning, where uh, I guess two typical types of problems that we consider in unsupervised learning is clustering, which we'll look at here, and also embeddings. So clustering is basically about partitioning data into similar groups. Embeddings, which we also have a sequence of videos on, is about finding uh, alternative good representations of your data that might be different from the one uh, that they're given in uh, to begin with. Okay. So if we want to compare unsupervised to supervised learning, we have a lot of videos on supervised learning as well. In supervised learning, right, we have this unknown target function that we're trying to learn, uh, which might be a mapping from d-dimensional feature vectors to a set of labels y. And in supervised learning, right, the input that we get to our learning algorithms is just a sequence of n uh, samples, xi, comma, f of xi. And each of these xi's is a feature vector, right, and f of xi is the corresponding evaluation of the unknown target function. And in supervised learning, right, we want to use this training data to train a model such that we can predict what value the unknown target function takes on a new x, right? So we're trying to learn this unknown target f. In unsupervised learning, on the other hand, in some sense, the input is just the feature vectors, x1 to xn, right? So, so there, are no, there are no labels on the input. And here the goal might be, for instance, in clustering, to group or cluster or partition these xi's based on similarities between the, these feature vectors. It could also be, for instance, in this embeddings, where we want to alter these feature vectors, maybe to help uh, a learning algorithm or maybe to make it faster. Right. So these are kind of like the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, we don't have labels. And in this video and the next two, uh, we'll be talking about clustering. So, so what is clustering first? So let me, let's just start with a brief motivation or just a very high level and non-technical uh, description of what a clustering is. Right. So at its core, clustering is just partitioning of a data set into groups or clusters, that we'll, which we'll call them. So for instance, in this data set here, consisting of these two dimensional points, uh, a clustering could look like this on the right hand side, right? You partition these into three groups, uh, these points, and you can see here in this, in this clustering, right? Nearby points are in the same cluster. And we call each of these groups uh, a cluster, right? So there's a red cluster, a blue cluster, and a green cluster in, in this picture here. And this seems like a, if I were to group these points into three groups, this seems like a natural way to, to group them or cluster them. So the goals in clustering uh, can be multiple. One of them is clustering for, for understanding and the other one is for so-called utility. And I'll try to say a little bit more about what these two concepts are. So clustering for understanding. Here the idea is that you want to group against uh, similar items together. And you can think of this and maybe as a kind of classification. So, so let's try to, to take an example from biology. So, you might know that life or biologists have divided all species into this whole tree of life uh, with different subspecies and, and so on, right? So there's life at the top, then there's a domain, a kingdom, a phylum, a class, an order, a family, a genius, and a species. So it's a huge uh, tree of finer and finer subdivision of all the species out there. So uh, if we take a look, for instance, at this kingdom uh, classification here. This kingdom classification consists of six classes or clusters, if you will, right? So every single living organism is partitioned or assigned to one of six clusters. And these clusters are uh, shown down here below, right? Some corresponding to what we call animals, uh, fungus, plants, bacteria, and so on, right? So these are the six uh, typical classes in, uh, in this kingdom classification or clustering of all life. Okay, so, so here you can see that these clusters are really used maybe for understanding or grouping things into things that are similar, right? All the plants go together, all the fungi go together, and so on. Another place where we might use a form of clustering and grouping for understanding is might be in psychology. So uh, people can suffer from depressions, but there are many different types of depressions, and maybe they need different treatments depending on what kind of depression that you're suffering from. And having a finer resolution or a finer classification 
grouping of different kinds of depression could also be useful both for treating patients, right? You know which treatment will work on one group, it might not work on another, and also to talking to other professionals. So here, depressions are also divided into many different ones, major depressions, persistent depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, and so on, right? So there are many different, you could call them clusters or groups of depressions. Okay. On the other hand, clustering for utility might be more as an algorithmic technique, if you will. Uh, so here, a common concept is the notion of a prototype. So many of the different clustering techniques out there produce a so-called prototype for each cluster. So in some sense, a prototype is a representative of the cluster, maybe a typical member of the cluster, right? So here I've highlighted three different prototypes. They are well representative of their clusters. I could imagine if you had the MNIST data set, which consists of these handwritten letters from zero to nine, even if you didn't have labels assigned to them, but you tried to cluster this into 10 clusters, these different digits, you might end up with a cluster for each of the different digits. And perhaps these could be prototypes, these images, right? These are very well representative, these 10 images down there of each of the different classes, right? So this nine down here could be a good representative for all the different nines in the MNIST data set. And if you have such prototypes, and uh, if you cluster and find prototypes, you can maybe use this to speed up learning algorithms. So for instance, some learning algorithms are quite slow. It could be, we've seen support vector machines earlier on. Um, PCA, principal component analysis, is also part of one of our videos. And uh, these are kind of slow algorithms whose running time grows super linearly with the size of the input. So in these cases, what you could do perhaps is if you have a fast clustering algorithm, you could first cluster, find prototypes for each of the clusters, and then maybe only train on the prototypes instead of the full data. Of course, this might lead to some small loss in accuracy, but only a small one if these prototypes are very good. Uh, but you might have huge gains in training speed, right? So, so there's a trade-off here between accuracy and, and training speed. So this is another application of, of clustering. Okay. So if we can go back to this comparison between supervised learning and unsupervised learning, one could say that in unsupervised learning, or at least in clustering, where we get this input x1 up to xn, in some sense, a clustering algorithm is really assigning labels to the points uh, without even seeing examples of what this unknown target function should, should tell them. There's no unknown target function, but it is really a way of labeling the data points. That's one way to think of it. Um, and unlike supervised learning, right, it's just based on these exercises. We don't see any labels during training. So we still have to somehow label the data into different groups or clusters of, of points. Okay. Now, of course, you should then ask yourself, if I have a data set of, of points here, uh, what should the clusters be? Like, which, which way should I cluster my points? And, and typically, though, it's not always easy to define what is it that you're looking for. Um, but in general, when you're doing clustering, you would often want that points that uh, are put together in the same cluster should be similar for whatever definition of similar uh, you're interested in. And points in different clusters should be dissimilar in some sense. Now, of course, it's not always uh, clear either how many clusters uh, you need to cluster your data into. And we could, for instance, look at this small example down here below with some points. Uh, there's a nice natural way, at least as humans, if we look at it, there's a very natural way to cluster it into cl two clusters. You might also do four clusters that could also be, be reasonable, or even six clusters here. These also look like reasonable small clusters, right? So there are a lot of things to address here. Um, what does it exactly mean that points are similar? Um, how many clusters do we need? And so on. And even then, there are also different types of clusterings that one can consider. Uh, in particular, two of the most basic ones are hierarchical clusters or partitional clusters. So partitional clusters are basically what we've just seen, what we call flat clusterings. So here, there's no notion of two clusters being more similar to each other than, than other clusters. It's just, I have, in this case, six clusters and uh, for instance, on the MNIST data set, there will typically be 10 different clusters, and there's no kind of notion of some being more similar to others. Okay, so uh, maybe it's easier to see exactly what we mean by a partition if we compare it to a hierarchical clustering. So a hierarchical clustering is more like a tree structure. So for instance, if we have the same data set as over here, I could see 
but maybe at the very top you have these two clouds here of the gray cloud and then and a red cloud so basically the gray cloud contains all the points here on the left and the red cloud contains all the points on the right so these are basically two major clusters but you could all, and this you can visualize in a tree here right so the black node here denotes all the points and the gray node denotes a subset of points over here the red node denotes this subset but then you can have a finer and finer partitioning of your clusters into smaller clusters for instance, the left cluster here could be partitioned into a dark blue cluster and a green cluster. So this is illustrated here on the tree. And then you could further subdivide uh, the dark blue cluster into two clusters, a yellow cluster and a uh, gray bluish cluster down here, right? And the same on the right-hand side. So a hierarchical clustering is really a tree-like uh, partitioning where you can make finer and finer clusters inside the uh, each, each cluster. And this is really what this uh, clustering from biology, this is really a hierarchical clustering, right? Where you have maybe at the top level, you have a partitioning into life and then domain and kingdom and phylum. So you do this finer and finer and finer uh, partitioning of, uh, of your points into smaller and smaller clusters or subclusters of the original ones. So these are the two different types, hierarchical and partitional. So our focus in this sequence of videos in the next two in particular is we will just focus on one concrete clustering approach. It's called k-means clustering. And this is a partitional clustering approach. It, create k, it creates k classes or okay, k clusters. And k is given by the user, the one that invokes this k-means clustering algorithm says, I want to produce k clusters. And here we assume basically that we know which K to, to go for. Alternatively, if you don't know exactly what K you can go for, you can just try to cluster with different values of K, look at the outcomes and see which one you prefer. Uh, but this is the one that we will, we will spend our time on in the next two videos. And to learn more about clustering, I suggest finding other material online if you want to know about other clustering uh, albums and methods.